and we are going to go to a magical little tea shop. Listen, it's treat yourself Saturday. Let's do a little book haul to the women he really wanted to bounce chicka wow wow with. If you read this book though, you will crave bread. It's like a rule you have to have delicious pastries for 48 hour readathons. I'm a little tired, I'm not gonna lie. Do I regret it? Yes. Hello friends! Today will be the start of a brand new reading vlog, a 48 hour readathon, in which I attempt to read all of the books. Grab your Starbucks! My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna to be such a fun day because today is gonna to be the start of a brand new 48 hour readathon. I don't know if I've ever done a 48 hour readathon on this channel. Usually I do 24 hour readathons and even those, I don't think I've done one in quite a while. This is incredibly inspired by Mel from Mel Reads. She is so funny, she has such great reading taste and she does these 48 hour readathon vlogs pretty consistently and I just love when she posts these. They're like some of my favorite content from her channel. I'll leave a couple of my favorites down below, but honestly, I just really, really love the idea of just taking two days every single month and trying to read as much as possible. So this is my attempt. I don't think I have told you guys like the specific number of books I really, really want to read this year. This is the year that I'm going for 100 books and I don't know if that's a mistake yet or not. I am currently Currently, I think five books behind schedule. In order for this to be as productive as possible, I need to try to read five books in the next two days. So that's what we're doing. We are attempting to read basically as many books as possible. I think that reading challenges are just kind of silly and fun. I don't take them so seriously that like if I don't hit my reading goal, it bothers me at all. But I think they're really, really fun challenges to kind of hit. So just for fun, I decided to kind of come up with a couple of prompts. This is not like an official readathon, but I wanted to come up with prompts for myself to kind of try to hit for the 48 hour readathon. And I came up with six. The first prompt is I would like to listen to something as an audiobook. The next prompt is I think I would like to read a thriller. The next prompt is a romance. Just like thrillers, I feel like romances are so digestible. You can read them so quickly. You can fall into the story so quickly. They're usually really, really fun and usually a little bit more fast paced. The fourth prompt is that I would like to read a graphic novel. The fifth one is I would like to pick up a book that I am dying to read. And I have quite a few that can match this category and I'm really excited to kind of dive through all of my TBR shelves. And then finally, the very last category is any short book. So it's like all the short books. I really just wanna make a big stack of like every single short book and then just kind of go through them. And I'm considering any short book, I think to be less than 300 pages or like around the 300 page mark. So yes, those are all of the prompts. And in a second, I'm gonna take you upstairs and we're gonna go through all of my TBR shelves and we are gonna pick out books that match every single one of these prompts. In addition to reading all of the books, today is gonna be really, really fun because we are also gonna go downtown and we are going to go to a magical little tea shop. I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of like add variety to where I'm reading. I have not been to this tea shop in forever, but it's one of my favorite places. It's so cozy, it's so magical, and and it's so whimsical, so I can't wait to take you with me. And then finally, we are also going to go book shopping, and I'm so excited. So I'm actually like partnering with Libro FM. Um, I'm making a TikTok basically in celebration of Independent Bookstore Day, which I'm really, really excited about. I'm gonna go downtown and actually film a TikTok kind of for them, but it's also for my channel. Um, really, it's for like Independent Bookstore Day, and I get to show everyone like my very favorite independent bookstore, which is local, and Hopefully we can find a couple of books to get there as well. So, okay, let's go ahead and go upstairs and we'll look through all of my TBR shelves and we will try to find books that match these prompts and then we'll go ahead and hit the road and go book shopping. Okay, so we are officially in my office. You are now in my vlog camera. So let's see if we can find some books to fit the prompts. Okay, so as far as romances, oh, 
I already know exactly what I want to read and that is Electric Idol. So this is the newest book in the Katie Robert, I think it's like Dark Olympus series and I have been so excited to read this for such a long time so this is definitely the book that I want to read. And I actually consumed Neon Gods last time both like physically but also as an audiobook and I really really liked the voice actors. There was a guy and a girl and I felt like their accents were hot <laughs> if I'm being honest. Okay so for my thriller one I think I'm actually gonna go with this one. I specifically got this from the library. I've heard so many people say that it's so good so I think I want to read this and that way I can also return it. Um, I don't really know a lot about this but I know it's a YA thriller and everyone who has read this has loved it. Okay and next up I need to pick out a book that I have been really excited to read for a really long time and to be honest I have been excited to read a lot of books. I really want to read The Thursday Murder Club. I really really want to read Ariadne. I really really want to read Milkfed. I really really want to read Finley Donovan is Killing It. That would have been a great one for thrillers as well. But I think the one I want to read most of all is Sourdough. Sourdough is a book about a girl who essentially like starts to babysit a sourdough starter and she falls in love with the act of baking and it just sounds like the perfect cottagecore moment. So I think this is the book that I'm going to use to fulfill that prompt. Okay and right next to it, this is perfect, is a graphic novel and I just purchased this graphic novel and I think it'll be perfect for the graphic novel prompt. Um, it looks so incredibly cute. Yeah, this is the one. Which means next, I just have to come up with all of the short books. Okay, so obviously these two are perfect. So this one is Slow Days Fast Company by Eve Babbitts. And then this one is The Empress of Salt and Fortune. Oh my gosh, Over the Woodward Wall. Not only is this one short, but it's also by Shauna McGuire. And yes, just 100% yes. Oh, this one I've been wanting to read for a while and I know it's short, hold on. So In the Dream House is actually a memoir and it is following like an abusive relationship, but it's supposed to be told in kind of like a very interesting way. I've heard excellent things about it and I read some of it a couple of years ago, but I don't remember a lot about it. I think this will be great. The problem is with my TBR shelves, I honestly have curated them so that I really want to read every book on these shelves. So it's really difficult for me to kind of like pick, which is a good thing. It's actually a really, really good thing. I might be interested in Outline, in Luster, and then finally in Sleepwalking. I, I can't do it. I cannot pick just one more book. Oh my gosh, I don't know. So I'm really, really torn. A part of me wants to do The Thursday Murder Club, a part of me wants to do Animal Farm, and then another part of me wants to read Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I think I'm going to do Before the Coffee Gets Cold, and I also think I might try to do this one because it's so short. Okay, this is my TBR. I have it on my little bookshelf cart. So we've got Electric Idol, which is going to be the audiobook and the romance. One of Us is Lying, which is going to be the thriller. The Girl from the Sea, which is the graphic novel. Then we've got Sourdough or Lois and the Adventures of the Underground Market, which is the book I really, really want to read. And then we have this huge plethora of short books that I can go ahead and choose from. I will definitely not be reading all of these books in the next two days, but the goal is to read five. But I think that's everything. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the audiobook for Electric Idol, get all of my things together, and we can go downtown and start the vlog with a little book shopping. Yay! Okay, besties, I just realized that this is a 48-hour readathon, and we need like an official start time. So it's Friday, 1.13, and I guess this is gonna go, oh my gosh, until Sunday, 1.13. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my audiobook, and with that, let's head downtown and go bookstore shopping. The great yellow sun is reflecting in your deep blue eyes The day has begun You spin around, you spin around, you laugh to yourself And I see you shine in every color, resting your head in my arms You sing la la la
Okay, so I am back from the tea shop and then from book shopping. I surprisingly found a lot of, well, okay, maybe not surprising if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, but I was only gonna get like one or two books. I wanted to get something because I love supporting that bookstore. However, I was not expecting to find like seven books. So we can do like a little mini haul. Okay, so without further ado, let's do a little book haul. So the first book that I purchased was Act Your Age, Eve Brown, and this is by Talia Hibbert. I loved the first book that I read in the series, which is, is it Take a Hint, Danny Brown? I love that book so much. It's not even the first in the series. The first in the series is Chloe, but they didn't have Chloe there. So I got this one. I don't know anything about this other than it is uh, an adult romance and that I already love the series. So yes. The next one that I purchased is Hotel Magnifique and this is by Emily J. Taylor. Such a beautiful cover. And I believe this is an adult fantasy. And I've been seeing this all over booktube. It's actually a book that I've wanted to get for quite a while and I'm so excited that they had it. And all I know about this is that it is about a hotel that has the ability to travel the world and about a girl who gets a job there. The next one I picked up is Freshwater and this is by Akawe Amezi. I have heard so many people talk about how wonderful this is and I've seen it everywhere on like literary fiction book talk. And all I know about this is that I think it is literary fiction slash magical realism. And it's about our main character, Ada, who is an unusual child and she has one foot in this world and one foot in another. Next up, I picked up The Witch's Heart and this is by Genevieve Gornich, I think. And this is an adult fantasy, but it's also a mythology retelling. And I wanna say it's Norse mythology. Okay, next up we have a book that I actually thought I was not going to buy because it is a book about horses and I'm just like not as interested in reading a book about horses. However, I decided to get it because it's the only book in Shauna McGuire's series that I have not read and that is Across the Green Grass Fields, of course, by Shauna McGuire. This is an adult novella, and it's part of the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire, which is like one of my favorite series of all, it might be my favorite series at this point of all time. And it's about our main protagonist who goes into the world, I guess, of horses. The next one I got, I kind of thought was like fate. So I've been asking my friend Allie in particular for recommendations for like nonfiction books that are exploring folklore. I've been following this TikTok account, the the creator's name is Piper CJ, I think that's the handle. And she has a literal master's degree in folklore and mythology. And she tells people like, how to avoid vampires, what to do if you get into a fairy ring. And it's so fun. I start my day every single day with watching one of her TikToks. And it's reminded me how much I used to just love learning about folklore. Her TikTok has like re-sparked that love. And now I just wanna devour everything about lore and folklore and mythology again. And so I purchased this. It is Treasury of Folklore, Seas and Rivers, Sirens, Selkies, and Ghost Ships. Doesn't that sound like the world's most perfect book for me? And it's so unbelievably beautiful as well. Like, it's just such a beautiful book. The paper quality is like that really nice, expensive, thick paper. It's got illustrations throughout it. I'm just really, really excited about it. And I don't know, I think this will be like really, really fun to devour. The last book that I purchased today was this one, which is The Island of Missing Trees. And this is by Elif Shafik. The cover is so beautiful. One of the owners of the book and cover really sold me because she said that it was so wonderful. And this was actually their very first book club pick for like their local book club. It's about two teenagers who meet and then they can't like get together. And then years and years later, one of them comes back, I think as like a botanist. So yes, those are all seven books that I purchased. As far as like progress made with the books that I'm reading for this readathon, I think I got to either chapter two or chapter three from sourdough at the like little wildflower apothecary and tea shop. I, I think it's around like 23 is where I stopped. And then as far as Electric Idol, I'm past one third of the way in. I don't know if I've like mentioned the summary of either of those books, so I'll just tell you right now. Sourdough is about a girl named Lois and Lois is working at a high tech company, but she's not really, really happy. And then eventually she's gonna be asked to watch the sourdough starter for these people who she 
she like loves their bakery and their sandwiches. Electric Idol is a Greek mythology romance retelling of Psyche and Eros, or Eros is Aphrodite's son. And it's kind of like a fake marriage situation. It's a little bit of like a Romeo and Juliet situation as well because Aphrodite, who is Eros's mother, does not like Demetrius, who is Psyche's mother. And Aphrodite wants Eros to kill Psyche. And like the only way to like make sure that that doesn't happen is they have to get married. And it's really, really good so far. I really, really like it. I think that's it for my update. I do need to do a little bit of work for a, a couple of hours. It's really late, so I don't wanna work for too long, but I have to answer a couple of emails back and then I will continue reading. So I will catch up with you the very next time I have an update. Bye. I just finished my work. It is 7.30, I'm ready to read and guess what? These two cuties are doing reading sprints. Legit, I'm not just <laughs> I know. Like Hi guys, so a little bit of an update. The sprints just ended and I had so much fun. Liv did such a great job hosting, officially on chapter 20, which means I have made like some pretty good progress. I'm more than halfway done and it's such a good book. It, it is so good. I would really like to sit in my reading chair and continue like listening slash reading to this. However, currently my cat is waiting for my dog to get out of my reading chair. Everyone wants to sit in this reading chair. I just have like a big pile of blankets on it right now. Do you hear my cat? Everyone wants to be on this thing. So I think I have to wait my turn. <laughs> my dog is completely taking up all the space in it and it's just cracking me up so much. I'm a little torn because a part of me wants to keep listening to this and I wanna play like a game or two on my Switch. I feel like that would be so fun. But another part of me wants to either pick up sourdough or maybe start my graphic novel just to kind of like change it up just a little bit. But I do think I'm gonna take off my makeup right now and put on like a face mask or something because after gnawing, I just, I don't want to feel foundation on my face anymore. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna go take off all my makeup, put on a face mask, and then I will catch up with you in just a little bit. Hello, okay, so I finally have all of my makeup off. I feel so nice. And I also have like these little eye patch things on. I love wearing these so much. Here's what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm going to pick up the graphic novel just for a little bit. And then when I'm like too tired slash I'm like zoning out too much, I think I'm going to continue listening to Electric Idol like audibly. And instead of reading along like I have been doing, I think I might play some Animal Crossing. I think that sounds like super cozy, super self-care-esque. <laughs> and I feel like it's like a great way to kind of break up the reading. I'm gonna try actually to stay up until like 12, but this is not an all-nighter. That is my update. So I think I'm gonna start with Sourdough, read a couple chapters, move on to my graphic novel, and then end with listening to Electric Idol and playing some Animal Crossing. Okay. Hi guys, good morning. It's Saturday morning. It's, I think, 10.30. I left my phone upstairs. I just filmed this really, really long clip and I forgot to turn on my microphone. I don't know if that's actually ever happened to me before. Like, I've had audio issues, but I've never just completely forgotten to turn off my microphone. That was like, that was like God's way of being like, you know what, you were a little long-winded. Like, let's see if you can wrap it up quicker next time. But good morning. I hope you guys are doing well. It's Saturday and I think it's around 10.30 and I actually finished listening to Electric Idol while I was getting ready for the day. I loved this book, I loved the conclusion. What I was trying to say earlier was I feel like I love this book for different reasons than I loved Neon Gods. First of all, they're both five out of five stars, so I recommend both books in the series. But I feel like in Neon Gods, I preferred the spice over the plot. So I would have given the spice a five out of five stars and I would have given the plot like a four out of five stars. But in this one, as much as I love the spice, like Katie Robert did a great job, I feel like I would have only given the spice a four out of five, but I give the plot a five out of five. So I feel like Neon Gods and Electric Idol are tied, but for different reasons. Like I preferred the plot of this one 
and I think I even preferred the couple of this one, but I preferred the spice scenes of the other one. I know I've already talked about it and I don't really wanna give away the ending. Um, don't pick this up if like you're looking for a super unique, never been done plot before. Like. This has so many fun romance tropes. Pick this up if you want something fun, something fast paced, something well written. Um, but yeah, I just, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. And also, I have a prediction for what I think is going to be next in this series. I haven't seen anything online about what the next book is going to be, but I paid really, really close attention to Psyche's sisters because Psyche in this series is Persephone's sister. And so I think kind of like the Danica Brown sisters, like I think all of these sisters are going to get their own spinoff. And I just realized that one of the sisters' name is Callisto. So if you know anything about the myth of Callisto, again, this has nothing to do with Katie Robert. This is just like Greek mythology. Like this is general Greek mythology knowledge. So there are not a lot of tales of like sapphic moments in Greek mythology because all of these moments were retold by men, right? And so we don't really have a lot of evidence or any evidence of like sapphic tales in Greek mythology. However, one of the myths that people have speculated, oh, there could have been something there, is the myth of Callisto. So Callisto was actually like a nymph, I think, or she was considered a maiden, and she was a person who did not want to get married. She did not want to lie by a man. And in Greek mythology, if you didn't want this, you could ask if you could be part of Artemis's kind of like group of friends who lived in the forest together and they like all took care of each other. And basically she was like just surrounded by nymphs and maidens and they were all like besties. They were roommates, okay? In this original Greek myth, Zeus fell in love with Callisto because she was apparently the most beautiful of all of the maidens and the nymphs of Artemis's like little group of friends. We know that Zeus is a little shady and he did things that were not great to get to the women he really wanted to um, bound chick a wow wow with. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He actually appeared as Artemis and Callisto saw Artemis and reached for Artemis and they were in what has been described as like a tender and intimate embrace. As Artemis reached for Callisto to kiss her, she became Zeus. Callisto was like, ah, oh, foiled by Zeus. No, no, seriously, actually she was, um, she was taken against her will, so it's not cute. So Callisto realizes kind of too late that it's actually Zeus, and then she becomes pregnant with Zeus's child, which sucks because when Artemis finds out, Artemis doesn't react the way we wish she would react. She is pissed off and she's like, you've betrayed my trust. And obviously Callisto didn't because it's not her fault that Zeus literally dressed up as Artemis and then took complete advantage of her. So Artemis, in a lot of different myths, like it, the variations change, but in the one that I specifically know off the top of my head, she changes Callisto into a bear. And then I think a hunter tries to kill her, not knowing it's Callisto, thinking it's just like a bear. And then Zeus feels bad, intervenes, and makes Callisto and her son, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, the constellations. And we can see like a lot of this myth represented in different paintings specifically um, of Callisto and of Zeus, but as Zeus is like dressed up as, or like pretending to be Artemis. And it's, it's a, it's a pretty sapphic moment. So here's the thing. I think that the next book in this series is actually going to be Callisto. And I think it's going to be a Callisto and Artemis retelling. So I think that the next book is going to be sapphic. It's just my prediction. I could be totally wrong, but I think that's what's gonna happen. I would say out of the two books that I've read so far, Neon Gods and also um, Electric Idol, my favorite love interest is Electric Idol's Eros. Eros is, Eros is my type. I mean, Hades objectively, come on. He's everyone's type as well. But Eros is definitely my type, like his, snarky side, his, like the way he's described. I don't know, he's, he sounds, Eros could get it. Okay, so like I'm really, really excited to see like what's next in the series because I feel like Katie Robert has not let me down once yet. And I have like a lot of faith in her Greek mythology retelling. So I'm excited to see, I don't know. I'm excited to see what's next in the series and I'm excited to see if I'm right in my prediction. We'll see. 
So like I said, it's 10.30 in the morning. It's bright and beautiful outside. It's a gorgeous Saturday. And aside from a couple of things that I have to do for work for like sponsorships and things like that, the only thing that I'm doing today is reading. And I thought it would be really, really fun to take my book and actually go to a cafe. Listen, it's Saturday. It's treat yourself Saturday. I'm thinking of getting like, I don't know, some kind of a pastry. They have really, really good croissants there, but they also have really, really good cinnamon rolls there. So I'm going to get something. I don't know what. I never get like pastries, but I just, I think like I have to do it for the 48 hour readathon. You know, it's like a rule. You have to have delicious pastries for 48 hour readathons. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to do that and I'm going to take sourdough with me and try to make some progress in this today as well. That is my update for today. First book down five out of five stars and technically it has not even been 24 hours yet. So let's hope I can make some more progress in this and I will catch up with you at the coffee shop. Let's go. bit of an update so first of all I will admit to you there was um, a point in this readathon where I forgot I was doing a readathon and I just went shopping I'm not proud of that moment I'm just confessing I did find a really cool like it looks almost like a dinosaur skeleton for my bookshelf though so I am halfway through sourdough so <laughs> I thought I would be further on but like it's my own fault because I ended up totally forgetting that I was doing the readathon and going shopping. Do I regret it? Yes, but also kind of no because I really like that T-Rex head thing. However, it is eight o'clock. You can't tell because the sun is out. It is eight o'clock and I need to get some serious reading done. Um, so I think I'm going to continue reading this book physically, but I think I might, like I really need to finish more books. <laughs> I'm running out of time in this 48 hour readathon. So I think I'm going to pick up my graphic novel probably in like an hour and like try to read that a little bit as well. A little bit of an update on the book. Um, I am on page 107 and I am obsessed with this book so far. I will tell you if you read this book though, you will crave bread. I do definitely want to finish at least one book tonight though because my goal was five books in 48 hours. Am I even gonna get three at this point? Like, is she even trying? So I think I'm going to pick up the graphic novel in a little bit, but I really don't wanna stop reading this book. I'm actually really, really enjoying it. But I think that is it as far as all of my updates and keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully I can finish at least one book tonight. Okay, talk to you soon. Hi friends, this feels weird. This feels like a weird angle. You are on my TBR cart and I'm just like sitting on the floor. So yeah, but it's a vlog. So we're like allowed to be casual, right? So a little bit of an update, it's the next day. I ended up spending most of the morning filming other videos for my channel. And because of that, I'm allowing myself to just read until the end of the day. We're no longer stopping at one o'clock. It's until the nighttime. 
and I'm excited about that decision. I also got myself this lovely vanilla latte, which I'm very excited to start drinking. I have not started it yet, but it smells incredible. And I thought I would give you a little bit of an update on like reading stuff. So yesterday I finished Electric Idol, and then I also finished two other books. I stayed up really, really late. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little tired, I'm not gonna lie. The first book that I finished was Sourdough by Robin Sloan, and this book, took a little bit of a turn that I was not expecting. I thought the book was going to be almost like a conversation on how like it's more important to like use your hands and like almost like technology versus like slow living. I was wrong. I was really wrong. So weirdly, the book kind of took more of a sci-fi twist, which I was not expecting, but I thoroughly enjoyed. But I thought it was so entertaining and so quirky and so just different. It really felt like a breath of fresh air. And and then the next one was just like a really, really quick read and that was the graphic novel, The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. And I'm really sad to say that like, I didn't really like this book. I love Molly Knox Ostertag's work. I loved The Witch Boy. I felt like Molly just like killed it in that story. I thought the representation was so cool. I felt like the magic was so cool. And I will say this, this book has like some of the most beautiful illustration style that I've ever seen. Like the color palette and the characters, they were just really, really gorgeous. So I did enjoy that aspect of the novel. I just didn't really like the story. And the reason I didn't really like the story is because I like just hated the romance. <laughs> I am a person who, okay. So I feel like with romance, I feel like it is actually a thing to have like insta love. I'm sure we've all experienced at one point or another seeing a person and it's not just like thinking they're attractive, it's like immediately having a chemistry with them to where you're like, oh my God, I like them. But in my opinion, you need so much more than that to like make a relationship work. Like insta love only goes so far if we don't have anything in common, it's not gonna work. And like as a reader, I want there to be some tension and some almost like obstacles so that I can root for the couple to get together and so that I can really be invested. In this book, like they kiss almost immediately because uh, the main character's name is Morgan and Morgan starts to drown and um, she's immediately rescued by this Selkie named Kelty. And Morgan thinks she's dreaming, so she's like, let me kiss Kelty uh, just because like it seems fun. There's really no thought behind it. She thinks that she's dreaming. And then Kelty thinks that now Morgan is like her one true love. And so she gets to become a human and they get to be together. It seems kind of like The Little Mermaid. So I feel like it should work, but in The Little Mermaid, you actually get to see the progression of Ariel and Eric like forming a relationship. Like you see them hanging out and you see them and they're not kissing yet. Like they're not in a relationship. So there's all this tension of will they get together? Will they not get together? And then on top of that, there's also like a time crunch. So you're really, really invested. But in this book, they just immediately get together. Like Morgan wants to keep their relationship a secret because she feels like she doesn't really want people to know that she is a lesbian. And so they keep it a secret, but they just immediately start dating. And you see all of these panels where they're just like kissing and they're together, but you don't get to see them interact really that much or like talk that much in my opinion. And when they do, they're arguing about things or like they don't really seem to have a ton in common. So I just don't really understand. I don't know. I just like wasn't invested in the relationship. And then also on top of that, I didn't really like any of the characters in this book. Her friends were so unlikable in my opinion. I'm sad because like I didn't really like it. Having said that, I would absolutely pick up another book from Molly because I, I've loved Molly's work in the past. And as an illustrator, she is just so talented. And I do think that this is gonna have an audience with people because it's not like a bad story. It's just one of those things where like, if you were not interested in the relationship, I don't think you're gonna like the book that much. And I just didn't like the relationship because there was no tension and they didn't have anything in common. So now let's move on to the books that I will be attempting to read today. Here is the stock. Okay, so I ended up getting this book here on audio and I don't know if I can read this entire book 
in a day, but I'm just going to see how much I can like listen to and then physically read along with because everyone says this is so good. I need to return it back to my library really, really soon. So I need to read it. So I'm going to be listening to the audiobook and I've decided to um, listen to the audio while I'm just doing kind of like cleaning chores at my house today. I really need to clean up the library. I don't know if any other book reviewers or booktubers or book TikTokers or Instagrammers can like relate to this. But when I do a video or like when I do something where I'm just talking about a stack of books, it looks like a disaster. <laughs> So I need to pick up all of those books and organize them in the library and I figured I would listen to the audiobook while doing that. The rest of the vlog is just going to be dedicated to tour books. So I really, really, really want to read Over the Woodward Wall. This is probably going to be like my number one physical reading book priority. It's a middle grade. I love middle grades. I feel like I haven't been reading as many middle grades this year. So yes, I'm going to be reading this one. And then if I have any time left over, I feel like this is such a short book. I'm sure I can read this today, maybe. So we've got this one, which is like a little adult novella slash fable. And then finally we have Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. I do not think I can read all four of these, but like my goal is maybe to listen to half of the audiobook for this and then maybe possibly to read like this book and this book or this book and like half of this book, we'll see. But yeah, those are all of my plans for today. I think what I'm gonna do right now though is listen to the audiobook for One of Us is Lying and pick up my library. But I think that is it, so I will catch up with you uh, the next time I have something to update you on. Okay. So I think this is gonna end up being my like lunch and my dinner. I'll just split it in half. Um, but I ended up getting these, which are spring rolls, and I got them with tofu. And then I got this, which is bibimbap. It's basically just like a ton of vegetables and tofu on rice. And then I also got this, which is like a taro boba. It just sounded so good. So I'm gonna put some of it in this little bowl and then I'll have the rest for my dinner. Hello friends. Okay, so it's actually been about a week since my 48 hour readathon thing has ended. Um, and I realized that I absolutely forgot to close out this vlog. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and review all of the books that I read in the past couple of days or like a week ago. So the first book that I read was Electric Idol by Katie Robert. This is an adult romance. And this is a five out of five stars. I think if I was being super accurate with my rating, it would be more like a 4.5 star. But I really, really enjoyed reading this. I thought it was so fun and so lighthearted. I really enjoyed the plot. I really enjoyed the characters. And I really enjoyed like the steamy scenes. So I really, really liked this. And I'm really, really glad that I read this for the readathon. I don't fully remember the order I read these in, but I did also finish Sourdough by Robin Sloan. This is an adult contemporary. And I really, really, really enjoyed this. It had kind of a little bit of like a sci-fi twist at the end, and it was unexpectedly like quirky. It went from like a whimsical read to a quirky, almost like slightly sci-fi humorous ending. And I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Very light though. Like I would not classify this as sci-fi there was just an element which I was like oh <laughs> this was totally unexpected and it kind of gave me some sci-fi vibes but in like the best way it is such a cute contemporary the entire time I read it I really really wanted to eat an entire loaf of bread I would probably give this like a solid 4.5 star as well next up was the only book that I thought was a little bit disappointing and that was The Girl from the Sea and this is by Molly Knox Ostertag now even though this particular story was disappointing I am I'm still very interested in picking up more books from this author. And that's because I loved Molly's first book, which is called The Witch Boy or Witch Boy. Highly, highly recommend. It's super, super cute. But also I just love her art style. Um, the way she uses colors, the way she depicts characters. I just think Molly is absolutely brilliant. And so I will be picking up more books from this author in the future. Um, but I just didn't really feel connected to this book and that's totally okay. 
And then finally, the very last book that I finished for this readathon was One of Us is Lying, and this is by Karen M. McManus. And I really, really enjoyed this one. Highly recommend if you pick this up, you pick up the audio because the audio for it was incredible. It was a full cast. It was so entertaining. I just really, really enjoyed my time reading this. Um, and I'm also really glad that I actually checked this one out from the library. I don't know. Highly recommend the library. Always, always recommend the library. This is a YA mystery thriller. I felt like the plot twists were really, really great. And I just, I really, really enjoyed reading this one. And then the last, book that I was reading slash working on finishing was Over the Woodward Wall by Shauna McGuire. Although I think on there it's by her pen name, Deborah A. Baker. And I'm still making my way through that one, so I can't really count it. So if you want to be specific, I think I read like four and a half books in this vlog. I was really hoping for five, but that's okay. I had so much fun in this vlog and it was just so nice to take two days just to read all of the books. And I think you guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching the vlog. And if you have made it to this point in the video, please leave me, I wish there was a teacup. Leave me the coffee emoji and we'll all pretend it's tea. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. I love you all so much. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes. Like it's something in the air at that time. Don't know why. Always dream of you when spring comes. It's like the heat.